inside, you'll never believe me. There are two cop cars, okay? And they're chasing four real deals, it's real need of work. Alright, figured we'd start off tonight with doing a small review on my 2017 Razer XP 1K TRE. So for those of you that aren't familiar, the TRE was also known as the Gold Limited Edition, but it's actually the Trail and Rocks Edition. So multiple different things that are different about that machine versus a regular XP 1K, including lower, low range. <clears throat> it's got uh, basically the turbo front axles, arched arms. Uh, for higher clearance, it's got you know heavy-duty skid plates, the bumpers, comes with a winch, um, click six harnesses. It's got um, even the four-wheel drive system. There's a lot of debate out there. Feels different in the way that it actuates. Um, comes with the 30-inch crawlers. Yeah, I know by today's standard, a 30-inch tire isn't much, but it gets me everywhere I want to go in Moab and more. Uh, I do spend actually quite a bit of time with these tires getting a lot more life out of them. I actually carve them with a tire groover. Seems to work really well. I can get most of the tire uh, life out of them then. So apologize, the lighting sucks in here. But as you can see, I keep whittling these tires. Every time they get a little low and the edges are pretty rounded off, I go through and I can at least sharpen up a few grooves. Really seems to help. So. Um, a couple other things that, that I've done with this machine actually that um, have really helped. For those of you that have been around it, you can probably see the shock therapy two-stage spring kits that are on the machine. Um, huge help. It, it articulates well. It rides well. Um, it, it, you know, it's fully adjustable. So for us, you know, we've got this machine set up for slow crawling and uh, it's been a huge improvement. And you'll hear me all the time saying stuff like, ah, oh, this is my favorite mod. Well, it's a must. I mean, if you you look at the overall cost of it, uh, it's pretty inexpensive you know, in comparison to the, what you're going to get for feeling and handling and adjustability out of the machine. Just added these walker links. I was playing around with a adjustable Zebra sway bar last year and didn't like it. It creaks and it cracks and it pops. Um, it is adjustable. It does give you some decent flex. A buddy of mine showed up with these walker links, which I thought was just snake oil. I thought, no way. Uh, it's not going to make that big of a difference. Actually, it made a huge difference. They articulate well. It rides nice. They're quiet. Um, it, it does give a little body roll to the machine. Um, so you certainly feel that uh, at first, but then once you kind of identify like where that stop is, you know, how far it's going to lean over and then it gets pretty solid, you get a lot more comfortable with the machine. <clears throat> so with that, a couple other things that I've done, obviously, if you took a look at the overall larger portion, uh, I actually did go with a UTV Wolfpack cage. So this is actually their like ultra, just short flat top. Nothing fancy cage. You know, I did actually have them add the bars in the front and things like that. I have a tubing bender. We build a lot of stuff with a tubing bender. I've built cages for Jeeps. But without having a jig and other things like that, I really just decided I want to go with something that I know is going to be safe. It's built by guys that race them. Uh, they're, they're familiar with these machines. So I went that route. Really like the cage. Um, <laughs> funny enough, I feel like it made a difference to the handling on the machine. Because of how much stiffer this thing is, it feels like I'm using the suspension to like its maximum potential. So just a cheap Totron 40 inch curved light bar on it. Um, you know, if you've never been around these things, it's pretty easy to outrun the factory headlights. Um, just a cheap Amazon 12 inch one up in the nose just for an additional kind of flood um, type lighting down below in there. Um, and then as we take a look around as well, you can see like the factor 55 hook, you know, I used to have the old factor 55 thimble, which was nice. Um, this is just quicker because I can snap through it. It gives me that opportunity to use it, you know, with other things. I switched over to soft shackles now as well. So I'm trying to use all the closed system winching that I can, um, just to prevent catching a hook in the face. But, uh, so far, I mean, this is a 4,500 pound factory winch, just the factory synthetic line has been really good so far. Um, a couple other things, 
you know, if you've, if you've ever crawled with these things, the Polaris, they thump really bad. Um, and my Can-Am does as well. So what I've done is I've actually added limiting straps to it in the front end, and that's really helped uh, avoid that, that piston bottom and out in the shock body and creating that big thump um, within the front suspension. So uh, again, not an expensive mod. Uh, well worth it. It's nice and quiet. It prevents that that piston from just getting beat to death in the machine. As we kind of step around, a couple other things. Of course, blue shop towels. I always find them randomly everywhere. Um, right now, basically what I've done is I've actually put a just a ram mount for my iPad um, up on here. Obviously, I've got my Baofeng radio just kind of hanging here for now. Um, I've actually just placed an order for a rugged radio. Um, I'm actually going to put an intercom in the machine as well as I am going to run their RM60 uh, radio. Yeah, a lot of people would debate and say, oh, you know, they don't make their own radio. Um, they, they, you know, just rebrand it and charge more. I understand that. That's probably more so the case with the Baofeng U5R radios. Um, that radio that I've got, I've got a couple of them. I've used them a lot. Um, they're a pretty good radio. Uh, I've just outgrown it. I actually have them right now just kind of laying it out, but I've been putting an external antenna up on the top. I don't have it in here because it actually hits my garage door inside the garage. But with that said, uh, the reason that I'm going with their RM60 rather than an eBay or, or Amazon cheapy uh, or, you know, the one that they actually buy and, and you know, upfit uh, is because they do have that wiring. They go into those, they change the wiring a bit, so that way all of my intercom uh, networking and all that stuff is all done in the back, so it's a nice, really clean uh, install, which is kind of what I'm after. I'll have to play around with it. I'm, I'm kind of thinking I'm gonna put some remote jacks down in here, um, and that way then I've got, uh, obviously, you know, I'm gonna be running these behind the head type setups. Um, I, they look awkward. They look crazy. If you've never been around them. Uh, it's really helpful. Um, just easy to listen to. You can pump music through them and everything else. It's nice and quiet. You can talk to your passengers. Um, I, I, you know, there's all this debate about, oh, rugged radio shouldn't sell it because, you know, you have people that don't have a ham radio license. You don't have to use those channels, like the actual um, regulated channels. You can use just the uh, the FMRS and GMRS, if I'm saying that right. Um, so those other radio channels are, are open. Those are the same ones that the little like Motorola, um, you know, style walkie talkies use. So, you know, anybody can use them. That's what all my buddies have are those little walkie talkies. I'm just going to use them with a bigger radio. I'll have a stronger signal. Plus I can listen to it, um, and you know, communicate through the system that I've got. Um, the other channels like the weather band radio and things like that. I like those channels just so I can obviously get a quick snapshot of uh, you know what the weather's doing so a um, couple other things that I've done to this machine actually um, just added a USB uh, lighting's terrible so I can't even see it so what I've added is a, a genius noco charging indicator here we go so as you take a look at that, what's interesting is now I can just quickly glance and see what the charges on the machine walking by. Uh, just another USB port that I've got in there that actually charges my iPad mini. So when I'm running my tablet for navigation, I'm running basically the Trails app. Uh, it's the same one that a lot of guys use. It's kind of the Bible trail map for like Moab trails, um, you know, as far as the book goes. Uh, my iPad plugs right in here, works really well, charges, um, I can download all those maps and run them offline so I don't have to have that cell connectivity, but if you are running an iPad, you're not aware of this, it needs to be the cell based iPad mini, uh, even if you're not paying for that subscription because the compass is stronger or better or it has a compass. Can't remember which one of those details it was, but uh, it navigates really well while you're offline. So food for thought in the future. Couple other things, um, you know, probably one of my favorite mods. Remember, I already said I'll talk a lot about all my favorite mods. So, Rocky Mountain Elk, if you've seen his videos, I bumped into him in the parking lot up at Moab Rim last year. Actually, one of the guys in his group had failed an axle shaft. We had uh, needed a jack, we had one, we loaned it to him. 
was talking to him and his wife and they were showing me this this tusk box right and for the longest time i was like ah oh, tusk you know it's okay yeah it's kind of a knockoff brand or a generic brand or whatever and uh you know i started really getting a lot of their other little things for you know, our can am and other vehicles or my buddies use them as well but i bought this box you can add these rails to it it doesn't have to have them on there i just sprayed it with some cheap bed liners just to give it a little grip on top but these boxes are awesome so i can put all my gear in here i've got tons of stuff in it one of the other tricks um, that i posted on some of the forums about is what you want to try to do is uh, vacuum pack you can pick them up like a vacuum packer cheap used ones even at uh, goodwill i vacuum pack all my stuff so like all my tools i have extra jerseys i have extra coats i have all kinds of other rain gear all the stuff that i may not need and then when I do need it, okay, yeah, it's all vacuum packed. It shrinks it down. When I do need it, I cut the bag, rip the stuff out of it, use it. No big deal. When I get home from, you know, a weekend of uh, hanging out and beating on the machines, I throw them back in there and vacuum pack them back down and I get everything sorted back out. So the cool thing about the Tusk box, it's all aluminum. Um, there's four screws, so you have to take the cargo out of it. There's four screws that are down in here, thumb screws that you take out. The box lifts off so you can get down into the top, like the valve cover. You had to change a spark plug or add oil. You're going to have to take that out. Um, not a big, big deal. It's got a really nice like seal foam gasket around the upper edge in here. And you can hear it. It slams down. It's like rock solid. Um, it's like the, the good push button style lock. You've got a key, a couple keys that come with it. Works really, really well. Um, just we, we just only used it last year after Rocky Mountain Elk uh, had suggested it. I ordered it in the parking lot uh, while I was talking to them to give it a shot. And uh, so I haven't had it at Moab yet. Uh, that's coming up this May. But we ran a lot of Wisconsin local trails and stuff like that that are dusty, like talcum powder type soil. And uh, held up well, no leaks. Uh, I don't get any dust. I don't get any water. Nothing like that. So... Um, other than that, on this machine, engine's essentially all stock. Nothing performance done to it. I've got plenty of power with this machine for what we do uh, for crawling. Uh, it's worked out really well. The one thing I did do, um, <clears throat> just to make sure that I could conserve some belt life, was you can hear my blowhole. I know, right? So it is noisy. actually just plugs into the taillight circuit so as soon as the timer kicks off in the main circuit on the machine it will actually kick that fan off too but for me the blowhole i wanted to i've seen guys spend money on the belt temp gauge and all of these things and that's important especially if it's not a stock machine you're putting more power through the belt i just decided you know what i mean that's great if i see the temp gauge and i know it's hot well great it's hot so i guess i just get to sit there like, well, what would prolong or cool the belt so that I could prolong my, my, you know, driving. And so I decided to go with a blowhole. And I can tell you, after beating on this machine, and we've been out in, in Moab in June and July, climbing a lot of trails, slow, um, you know, deep mud, things like that as well. And it's held up awesome. My belt has never gotten hot. It's not hourglass or anything like that, which is more operator than it is temp uh, related for an hourglass. But... Um, it makes a huge difference. So I would highly recommend the blowhole as well. So I've got a other bunch of really little random things that I've done to the machine, but overall, those are the main things. Um, just thought I'd throw it out there because we don't see that many walk-arounds on these machines. Every time I take this thing out, I get people, oh, it's, it's the ultra rare. And they're not really that rare. When you go out to Moab, it's kind of like a gathering of the gold machines because there are a lot of them got another guy in my group that has the newer version uh the new body style machine but it's also the tre uh, highly recommend it. it's an awesome machine the only thing i've really had to do to this thing so far is uh i just grease the rod ends in the back with a needle maybe i'll film that at another time i need to do that before we leave for moab and grease the wheel bearings you know like everybody does with all the cams razors everything 
Um, just not enough grease in them from the factory. I hit them like once a year. I did in this machine, speaking of grease, I did toss in a uh, Sandcraft, which you can barely see the Zerk. I'll have to fix that in the future, but I did add, add a uh, Sandcraft um, carrier bearing to this machine. It had quite a bit of, you know, the, the, the shaking and the, you know, all the characteristics you hear about from the guys that are out there. I didn't go with a balanced drive line. I didn't go with a bigger drive line. I didn't do anything fancy other than the bearing. And I put in the remote grease whip up into the floor panel so that I can just grease it. I give it just a couple of pumps a year total. And it's been awesome. Yes, it does vibrate some like that. I get it. I rarely run the machine in four wheel drive. Uh, Wisconsin never need the four wheel drive. Go out to Moab, I only turn it into four wheel drive. As soon as I get to an obstacle, the rest of the time I'm bombing through the desert in two wheel drive. And it shows in only in one area. My front tires don't show, show a lot of wear. Or the rears, I've had to, again, hack these up pretty bad because they wear a lot faster. It just is what it is. So other than that, that pretty much wraps up the quick review of this machine. Off to do one on our X3. And this episode of Twisted Trails and Rocks is brought to you by Botulism's Best. Little moonshine goes a long ways. Nobody knows where it's from. It's got a lot of rust in it. Could give you the shits, but I love it and it really messes you up.